majestic bow of titanic looms out of the darkness as our submersible rises slowly. What looks like a large elephant trunk is in fact stalactite structures called rusticles. These are formed when iron-eating bacteria attacks the steel and sunken ships. are coming out of the centre hose pipe, but the centre anchor chain would have come through. We're now approaching the forward railings of the very prow of the Titanic, and we can see more rusticles draped over those railings, and a small little bamboo coral pointing forward. We're now looking into the weld where the huge center anchor still lies in its place. Just above it you can see the crane that would have lifted that out. Age is taking its toll on the shipwreck and the railings are starting to collapse outwards. Coming into view as we travel along the port or left side, we can see one of the anchor chains. distance on the right hand side some mooring bollards and a very large bronze capstan comes into view still glistening and shiny after 111 years on the seabed the anchor chains are now moving there towards the windlasses where they would have pull them back down into the chain locker at the bottom of the ship. A second bronze capstan comes into view. And on top of that is a memorial plaque that was left on a previous expedition in the past. Over on the Left hand side, we can see the entrance into hold number one. This whole deck area is known as the focus of deck. What looks like a wall there in the background is, a, is actually a breakwater or wave break, as it's described. This would have deflected large waves that were breaking over the bow of the ship and to flag them away to the sides. a much better view of the wave break.
And now we approach the foremast or main mast of the ship, which has completely collapsed, lying across more steam winches. When I first dived on the ship in the summer of 2000, the main mast lay right across the well deck onto the bridge. And now, as we can see, it has completely collapsed. It's very sad to see it like this. Looking down into the well deck, we can see the doorway that would have stepped out onto the crow's nest. The crow's nest where Frederick Fleek, the lookout, spied the iceberg. The bell would have hung just above the doorway on that hook. We're now traveling across the well deck One of the electric cranes and we're now rising up above towards the bridge area going over across B and A deck. The whole area of the bridge on the Titanic was made out of timber and it got destroyed in the sinking and all that is left in that whole area is the bronze tally motor. The tally motor was a pump that the main wheel was attached to and when the wheel was turned it's, it helped the rudder change direction. This whole area is completely collapsed and destroyed. The memorial plaques go back over 20 years or more. The three on the left hand side are actually ones that I left and my dives in 2000 and 2005. And they are from Ireland, they are from Belfast and they are from Cove, Titanic's last port of call. Just there on the left hand side you can see a bent shiny bar. That bar we believe is the remains of the linkage that brought the steering wheel connection to the forward steering wheel in the bridge. This great shot gives us a whole panoramic view of that area. behind the telemotor here is in fact and what looks like three windows are actually dummy windows that were placed into the navigation uh, and chart room and um, the pilot's room they actually let light in from the chunking area that left air ventilate down On the left there is the remains of Captain Smith's cabin, which is completely destroyed now. It was quite intact when the wreck was first discovered in 1985. But nature is taking its toll. We're now approaching the casing number one, the funnel, or the funnel number one was, which would have gone all the way down to the border rooms and the uh, uptakes for the smokestacks. water tank behind that looms into view and again the remains of more ventilation trunks or fan trunks as they were called. And now 
we're just coming towards the expansion joint and we can see the remains of skylights and holes in the roof there and they led down into the Marconi room where Jack Phillips and Harold Bride sent out their messages their SOS messages of distress and we're now approaching the void or open space of the remains of the grand staircase There's nothing to see of the ground staircase that was completely destroyed in the, in the sinking. So all we have is just a, a, gate, a gate we have going down into the ship. We'll be coming back to that in a few minutes just to have a better look. small wall there on the right is actually the entrance to the grand staircase first class entrance which brought you into the grand staircase area this area where Approaching now is the reading and writing room area and the first class lounge. And it's also the area where the ship broke in two, so a lot of this is quite um, destroyed and a bit difficult to make out. But just to the left hand side there is the void where the second funnel was. So beyond here, there's really nothing else except the collapsed decks going right down to the seabed. And now we're on the seabed, just near the broken area, and lots of unrecognizable pieces of the ship are all around us here. We're making our way back towards the section that broke off where we will see some quite extraordinary sights and that is of the borders the double-ended scotch borders that birthed the coal that raised the steam that drove the huge engines for titanic these um, borders weighed around 90 tons each and the image we're going to see now of them gives you a great overview as they still are in position here with the ship broke. There they are there. You can just make out some of the doors where the coal would have been shoveled in by all those men who slaved for hours down on the bowels of the ship. Now we're back at the ground staircase. And if you look very carefully, you can see right down there two hanging chandeliers. Again, rising up here, we can see the remains of more uh, ventilation chunks.
We're now traveling along uh, the port side again, to, back towards the bow. The boat deck just there on the right hand side and one of the two remaining lifeboat davits hanging out. It gives you pause to think about the people who got into those lifeboats. approaching on the starboard or the right hand side of the ship looking at the cabin room windows on B deck and all those white items and objects are actually bamboo coral and as we get closer we can have a, a very good look at those and also have a very good look at the rust and more rusticles draped over those windows if you look intently at the window on the left, you can just make out inside there some of the window fittings. The thrusters from the submersible are causing that dust. And we can see some soft coral. And there is a, a scuttle or a drainage area for water to pour off the side of the ship. And that's an interesting little gate there. You can see the hinge, two hinges top and bottom on the right hand side. We're at the very forward end now here of B-Tech. And we're now just coming into view will be the well deck just below the bridge area and B and C decks where the electric cranes and holes number two and three are as our camera hands over that little curved area, we can get a good look at some of the estimated three million rivets that held all the ship together. In the background there is the other electric crane. We'll get a better view of it now in a moment. away back towards starboard side of the forecastle deck and we can see the anchor chains again some triple fair leads in the distance the anchor crane again in front of us and a little hatch there just see it there the lid is gone from it that goes all the way down about uh, three or four or five decks and that wire draped over the anchor chain there is probably one of the ones that held the crane in position. And we make our way away into the darkness as we think about where we've just been. 